Thank you for taking the time to listen to me today as I speak about the bill calling for the removal of books from our school libraries. I feel this new book banning bill is irresponsible, ignorant, and even dangerous. Many books on the list from Representative Krauss contain helpful information about abortions, sexual education, and human rights. Books that mention LGBTQ plus people make up over half the books listed. Removal of these books could lead to miseducation of teens due to lack of consistent information, which could add to mistrust in parents, teachers, and other adults in their life. This constant need to control youth and their development shows a systematic problem within this school system. So many histories, such as those of LGBTQ plus people, indigenous people, and that of the true history of our country will be erased if this book ban follows through. One of Granbury High School's own seniors, Kennedy Tackett, started a petition to stop the book ban. In just four days, it had already gotten 646 signatures. One of the most liked comments on the petition came from GHS senior, Caitlin Sucampo. Quote, I don't need others to decide for me what's comfortable and appropriate for me to read. I'm here to get educated and I should be able to go to my library for the necessary resources to do so. Stop censoring my education. Uncomfortable with the book you picked? Close the book and put it back on the shelf. End quote. What is the board hoping to achieve by bringing this into fruition? Why must anyone decide the acceptable level of comfort before a book is removed from the shelf? Among other comments on the petition, one student mentioned that quote, any and all forms of book bans are attacks on educational freedom and librarians should not be discredited in their ability to choose books that are appropriate and educational, end quote. In conclusion, this ban would have adverse effects on the well-being and education of our student body. As students, we deserve a complete education free from bias. We want to learn about things that may not be the prettiest or the most comfortable, but we as students are entitled to complete knowledge, not information that has been disseminated. Thank you for the high school, and today I'm here to talk about the books under attack in our libraries. I want to start this out simple. The job of the superintendent and the school board is to not only protect the students in this district, but to make them feel like they have a place in this community. But I got to tell you, from what I'm seeing so far, you are failing at your job. When I caught wind of, the high, uh, excuse me, wind of the books being torn off the shelves at the high school's library, I was astounded. I looked further into the situation, discovering that there was a committee soon to be formed to review the controversial books of the Kraus list. The fact that a committee is being formed in the first place is a major issue. An analysis of the 850 book list found the following likely reasons for inclusion. 60% because of LGBTQ+, 8% because of race and racism, 13% because of sexual education, something that is not taught in all Texas schools. Mind you, these books are educational, not pornographic. I'm enraged that these harmless books are being attacked, and I'm not alone on this. I created a petition on Friday morning to allow other students and members of this community to have a voice where they may not be heard elsewhere. As of 3 p.m. today, we have 654 signatures with lots of comments from supporters. I want to read a few, of these, a few of these to you from students. One writes, I don't need others to decide for me what is comfortable and appropriate for me to read. Another writes, blatant racism and homophobia is easily seen in the choices of the books they are trying to ban. Finally, one that I find to be quite powerful, freedom of speech until it's something they don't like. As to, as to the comment made in the Hood County News article stating that due to our conservative climate, these discussions are to be had at home, I am deeply concerned. Because of these, uh, I mean, but first of all, because we are in a conservative climate, those conversations are not really had. Trust me, I walk through the halls of the high school every day hearing nothing but slurs and derogatory comments towards the minority groups included in this list. Second, it's plain and simple. If you don't like it, put the book down. No one is forcing you to read it. Stop the censorship in our district. Wake up to the reality that we are all different and we should all embrace each other with love, not blatant hate. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the time. Uh, I just wanted to read GISD's, uh, two parts of GISD's own policy. A district possesses significant discretion to determine the content of its school libraries. A district must, however, exercise its discretion in a manner consistent with the First Amendment. Students' First Amendment rights are implicated by the removal of books from the shelves of a, a school library. The district shall not remove materials from a library for the purpose of denying students access to ideas with which the district disagrees. A district may remove materials because they are pervasively vulgar or, or based solely upon the educational suitability of the books in question. That's the Supreme Court in 1982. 
The second part of the policy is the following principles shall guide the board and staff in responding to challenges of instructional resources. A, complaint may, a complainant may raise an objection to an instructional resource used in a school's educational program despite the fact that the professional staff selecting the resources were qualified to make the selection followed the proper procedure and adhered to the objectives and criteria for instructional resource set out in this policy. A parent's ability to exercise control over reading, listening, or viewing matter extends only to his or her own child. Access to a challenged resource shall not be restricted during the reconsideration process, except the district may deny access to a child requested by the child's parent. The major criterion for the final decision on challenged resources is the appropriateness of the resource for its intended educational use. No challenged instructional resource shall be removed solely because of the ideas expressed therein. Thank you. What is being talked about, taking books off of shelves, that books are somehow harming our kids, that's being pushed by the same people who are actively looking to tear down public schools. They are uh, advising parents to get kids out of public schools. They're working to get legislators elected who will support um, taking public school funding and creating vouchers from it. That will allow the well-to-do to go to private faith-based schools and those who can't afford the tuition will be trapped in underfunded public schools. They are working to inject their religion into what should be a place where faith is not imposed. Look, you should be and likely are here because you believe in public schools, but you are following those who want to tear apart the profession, who demean educators as professionals, and I can't understand why we would go down that path. Public schools aren't here to deliver the education to all kids that this parent or that parent wants for their own child. Parents should be able to excuse or remove their child from elements that they aren't comfortable with, which is current district policy for something that is challenged, a book or a lesson. It doesn't impact all students, and it preserves everyone's First Amendment rights as per the Supreme Court. Public schools are here to get kids ready to step into society, meaning all of our kids have the tools to be successful, are able to learn about where we've been and where we're headed next, about differences and how valuable they are, and about finding themselves. <sighs> And that's why we're here speaking up. Based on my open records request uh, that I just received, so thank you, Faith, um, there have not been any requests so far from any member of the community for removal of books this school year. Yet here we are having this conversation. Um, we are aware that bo bo boxes of books were being removed from school libraries on Tuesday, January 11th, including anything that referenced LGBTQ or sexuality. Not a handful of titles, boxes. <sighs> We are aware there wasn't any formal process followed, especially not following the policy that Mindy just read, just a directive given where the district is violating that same policy. And now we get a committee which I hope truly is legit and not just fate accompli. We are watching. We will stand in the gap. We will go the extra mile for every single one of our kids. My name Thank is you. Susan Wood. I'm a retired counselor and educator. I'm speaking in regards to the books that have been pulled for review. Let me first say I believe it is the right of every parent to tell their child whether they may or may not read a particular book. I am, however, strongly opposed to telling another person's child what they may or may not read. The freedom to choose what you want to read is the ultimate expression of liberty. Imposing your standards and beliefs on the community at large is not acceptable. The school is here to serve all students. And the books are available to those students should not limit them. When a student reads, they are able to expand their understanding beyond the confines of their current situation. Studies show students who read develop more empathy, that they gain the opportunity to walk in another's shoes. Reading can show us different viewpoints and life circumstances. We can see the world through another's eyes as another ethnicity, culture, 
social class, gender, profession, or age. Books can tell us what it's like to lose a limb, immigrate to another country, be born into poverty, to survive tragedy. Taken together, this can change our relationships with others in the real world. I am in the top 3% of my class. I'm on track to graduate with a, with a multiplier on my degree and with distinction. And I don't say any of this to sit here and talk about myself or to brag, but I simply want to emphasize to y'all who it is that is upset about this book ban. And it's not just delinquents who want to read smut. It's honor students who want access to the full extent of their education. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the complete slippery slope that book banning leads to because I learned from a book that I checked out from my school's library that I don't need to resort to logical fallacy to make a point. I'm simply going to say that no government, and public school is an extension of government, has ever banned books and banned information from its public and been remembered in history as the good guys. I also want to question, who is making this decision? I count probably, I'm going to say 10 people here, I'm not going to waste my time and count, but, and then one politician and whoever's on this board, that's under 50 people sitting and deciding the information that thousands of students are going to have access to. And those people, like everyone else, like myself included, are going to be subject to prejudice. I don't mean this in a racial way, I don't mean this in a sexual way, I mean it in the purest sense of the word, being that their opinions are going to change what books that they think are and aren't appropriate. And I think that that is entirely undemocratic. Opinions should not justify what information children have access to, because we need to be able to see all sides of opinions, whether they're wrong or right, to determine for ourselves what's wrong or right, or we raise mindless citizens. I understand that at 16, I have not yet legally earned the right to decide for myself what is and isn't right for me. What I'm here to question is that I, I'm not going to throw names because I know that's their livelihood, but I've yet to talk to a single teacher who's happy about this. My parents did not receive anything about this. This was not put up to a vote. So I understand that adults have to make decisions for me, but the community has the right to decide as opposed to... I mean, 50 tops people putting in their opinions toward this and limiting everything I'm else. concerned because often what happens when people um, look over books for review, um, even if you have the best intention, you're just trying to look out for your kids, I know. It's that only one side of the story gets told, especially because and y'all are all white and y'all are picking the committee. Are they all going to be white? Can we have some brown people on that committee too? That's extremely important because we have a lot of brown kids and we're only going to get more and their story needs to be told. Representation matters. It's going to affect the way they learn. Um, so we just, we need to make sure that the committee has, um, that there's oversight and that there are people who are going to make sure that we're not just going to try to erase identities. And then I just want to talk about the kid who goes to the library to look at books, probably doesn't fit in with all the other kids. So it is the person who maybe is gay and needs to see themselves in the stories so that they don't feel like they have to be erased so that they are not bitter and hurt the rest of their lives. And the last thing I want to say is that uh, my friend, my best friend, is a vegetarian, um, which it's OK with her if, if I have chicken. I don't have to pretend that chicken doesn't exist because she knows she thinks it's bad for her and her kids and she chooses not to feed them that and I will never give her kids meat but she doesn't expect me to not give my kids meat and I think we just need to respect our teachers and trust that they know what they're doing they have degrees and I would much rather my children learn about our history even the difficult parts in a classroom with a qualified teacher who can help navigate the discussion than on social media which is where they're going to learn about it by the way they're not going to learn about it at home they're going to learn about it from social media, from their friends, and it's going to be nasty. So we need books. Thank you, guys. At Granbury High School, um, whenever I first heard about this book banning, or we are aware that it's not a book banning, but more of a book review, we do know that. I didn't really, at first, I just I didn't care all that much because I'm a senior. I graduated in four months, and I thought nobody really goes to the library much anymore. But now, more that I thought about it, the more I realize how ridiculous this is. I am queer, I am brown, and I'm very proud of that. And I am well aware of the censorship that has happened to my people over the centuries. I'm well aware of this, and I think it is horrible. 
And I don't think that little children should be shocked or disgusted by our identities and by the books and even people who don't identify with those identities. There were books, one was called I'm Pregnant, Now What Do I Do? for teen pregnancy, sexual education, which we don't have at the high school. We have no sex ed. Um, so teen pregnancy, sexual ed, LGBTQ+, plus, like love stories and safety and race and activism, which has been so important in my identity as one that is the direct result of colonialism and the survival of my people. And I think it's disgusting that even in 2022, we still have to have these discussions about censorship. One of the concerns that I have about the book review is that as a school district, your role is to remain neutral. That means apolitical and a-religious. And when we look at the list of books that are on this um, up for review, it is very concerning that in our political, in our climate right now, everything is very polarized. And as a school district, as a school board, I would encourage you not to make this a polarized issue, but to teach our students how to reach a consensus through leadership. And in my mind, that means making it transparent who is on the committee, making sure that the committee is representative of our school district and the diversity that exists within our school district. I think also I would encourage every community committee member to read the books that are up for review. And I think that they should also have to offer a justification to us as parents as to why that um, book may end up being removed from the library. I feel like that is a thorough and objective way to help make sure this review occurs um, in a way that benefits our children. That being said, books to me offer a whole new world, a world that doesn't exist in my day to day. Books are to teach about humanity and empathy and connection. And I feel like when you take that away, especially when you take the representation of LGBTQ students, when you take that out of our libraries, you're hurting that. You're not fostering those beautiful character traits that I want my children to exhibit. So I'm just asking that as we, as a school district, look at these books, that we do it in a way that really honors our students. As you know, the Texas, uh, uh, Texas education is a responsibility of the state, which essentially makes uh, Governor Abbott our CEO. As far as uh, the concerns about removing books, let's not misrepresent things. We're not taking Shakespeare or Hemingway off the shelves, and we're not going and grabbing every uh, socially, culturally, or religiously diverse book and pulling them. That's absurd, and the people that are saying that are gaslighters, and it's designed to incite division. Abbott said, that students should not have access to vulgar or pornographic materials in schools, and our district totally agrees with that. Those are exactly the type of books we removed. The books I removed were vulgar. The writing was sexually explicit and, in my opinion, pornographic. It has no place in the hands of 13, 14, or 15-year-old kids, and our school owes our community an apology for ever having allowed it into our schools. We will conduct a full investigation and put processes in place to ensure it never happens again. And I hope and pray every school district in Texas will do the same. Because like many communities and superintendents, I never thought it would happen here when it first uh, uh, came up. During my tenure, I have witnessed radicals come into our boardroom and go on to social media platforms to distort the truth, exaggerate issues, and uh, badmouth our trustees. To those individuals, please know, like the little boy's cry of wolf, you have lost all credibility to the majority in this community. We will not back down from you. We will not let you divide our school and community, and we will stand up for what's best for our children. And I want you to know this. Tonight, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to get a great night's sleep, because unlike you, I've actually read what's in those books. And I'm proud that they've been removed from our shelves and we've made the right decision for kids. 
When, when Governor Abbott's letter came out and uh, regarding, it prompted our review of our libraries and what's in them, but also our processes and procedures and our policies. And so this is just going to align those two policies. We still have some work to do to tighten up our um, processes and procedures, but this is going to align um, the policy so that in the event that we do have a book uh, that is in our library that is vulgar and overtly sexual, it can be removed without review. And then I, I just want to add to that, I, again, the, uh, the direction we are going as a district, and I want to give a, a special uh, shout out to, to Stacy Brown, who has agreed to chair uh, the, the B Library Book Review Committee moving forward. It's not a, a, a committee that we want on the back end removing books. What it is is a committee that we want on the front end uh, looking at the material, making sure it's age appropriate, making sure that it's educationally suitable, and then placing it in our libraries. We don't want any one person to have unilateral authority to make these decisions. So, Are there any questions, comments from the board? All those in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? It passes unanimously.